Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Let's Play God of War, affectionately nicknamed Dad of Boy. This is not the God of War first release on the PS2 in 2005, but this also isn't the reboot you might think it is. It's more the series reinventing itself entirely. Uh, I played it last month when it came out, and it surpassed all of my expectations, so now I'm excited to share this LP with all of you because it departs so drastically from its roots, and yet it builds off of them in a really spectacular way. So note the handprint. Also, there's something I really appreciate right off the bat, which is we're pounding the attack button over and over to chop the tree. That's how this begins, and God of War 3 also ends with you furiously mashing the attack button. Over and over and over. Found some. Get in the boat, boy. This is Kratos' son. His name is Boy, but he's also sometimes called Atreus. Still want me to tie it to the boat? Again, note the handprint as the main Father, quest symbol. What? Did something change? The forest feels different. Hmm. Everything is different, boy. Try not to dwell on it. Yes, sir. Also, you gotta love how different this opening is from every other God of War game. It's subdued. This isn't starting off with the Hydra and a big storm. It's not starting off fighting the Colossus of Rhodes or Poseidon. It's solemn. It's solemn and subdued. And beautiful. Beautiful and quiet. Oh, 
Oh, music by Bear McCreary. This game is a lovely soundtrack. And Bear McCreary is... perennially underrated. That was the last. She's ready. I love how this piece changes the second he steps into the doorway and then the way he's framed in the doorway. Backlit. So all we see is this this imposing, threatening silhouette. What are we hunting? You are hunting deer. Which way? In the direction of deer. Okay. Uh... This way. Father? Why are we doing this now? I need to know you can survive the journey. 
Then we leave for the mountain? Depends on you. Hunt. What did you find? Tracks. Not deer, though. I'll keep looking. This starts off in such a different manner and yet really powerful and evocative. Completely emblematic of how the, this series has changed. Boy, you miss these. Huh. Close. But also not deer. See? Tips are too wide. Mountain goat? Your mother taught you well. Yeah. So what we don't really know yet is what journey this is that they're embarking on. We'll find out soon enough. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah! I love this new <laughs> this new chest opening animation. Instead of the mash circle to open the chest and struggle to open up, he just punches straight through. <laughs> More tracks? Yeah, but they're too round. Could be a wild boar. Good. Let's see. And we didn't miss anything around here. Uh, unlike previous God of War games, this is not nearly as linear. Uh, there's still a pretty linear, straightforward path through the main game, but it's now substantially more open-ended. Now what? Not quite open world. This way, boy. But more open to exploration. Wait, dear Drax, they're fresh. This way. Also, I really like Atreus' stumbling animation the first time he makes that leap. How he has to catch his balance. Ah! Found it! Slow down, boy. You are hunting deer, not chasing it. Yes, father. Hey, we found the direction of deer. These majestic magic deer. And hack silver is going to serve as our currency. Of which we just got a little bit more. About 500 more in the last couple of seconds. And across the chasm, we see a chain leading down. We'll get to the other side uh, in a little bit. He broke our bridge. How are we going to get across? Step aside. And this is where we're going to be taught about our axe for the first time. Namely, that we can throw it and, like Mjolnir, recall it. There it is! Hold! What are you doing? Now its guard is up. Only fire. Only fire. When I tell you to fire. I'm sorry. Do not be sorry. Be better. Find it. <clears throat> Find it. So many things going on in that interaction. Ah, my boat! No! You are not ready! Stay back! Atreus's pouty, resentful face and the way he puffs off, and uh the way Kratos catches himself. And then we immediately transition into this, which is Again, very, very different from how God of War usually goes. Uh, this style of combat, you'll notice, is... Very much so inspired by Dark Souls, and not in the vein, like the character action vein, character action-esque, uh, of an action game that God of War was. Oh, that's so good feeling! Uh, not entirely Dark Souls-esque, but... Yeah, you know, the basic controls are there. 
R1, R2, light and heavies, the lock-on, the general style of the camera. That's its own flavor, though, in what you are able to do in combat. Uh, throwing the axe, recalling it midair, juggling all this stuff. Mmm. Feels really nice and hefty. Trogger. They've never come this close to our woods before. Keep moving. And then from here, we have a couple of paths that branch out in different directions. We can follow Atreus to stalk the deer. Way. I can see more tracks. Or we can follow you. Or we can do that. Uh, we're going to hit up all of the branching paths from this area uh, before we go back to following the deer. Nothing too interesting to find just yet, but there are a couple of worthwhile pickups off the beaten path. Uh, so this is the part where I let you all know that I am not going to get everything. I am going to miss plenty. Some things intentionally that I'm not going to pursue. Some things I'm just going to be super blind about. And that's whatever. And it's still going to do a decent amount of exploring. Uh, but just be aware that I'm definitely not going after 100% in this game. Uh, and if I miss a few things, I don't care. It's not that big a deal. Uh, there are some really cool optional things I will definitely make sure I get, though. We can. They weren't mean. They were starving. Yes, I imagine they were. And I love how much contrast we get so early on between Kratos and Atreus. Atreus is innocent and compassionate. Kratos is not, to say the least. But he's also not quite who he was in the previous God of War games. Go. Or at least he's trying not to Find be. The edge, boy. You can see he's trying to be restrained. He's older and he's mellowed out a little bit. But he was still pretty much a monster, as of, like, God of War 2 and th especially 3. He single-handedly caused the destruction of Greece in his violent, vengeful pursuit of, uh, murdering Zeus. So we have two of three seals. These are special chests containing, uh, what are essentially heart fragments. One of three apples of Idun. Hope I'm saying that right. Uh, Idun was something like a fertility goddess in Norse mythology, and her stories often involved apples. So there are nine of those total in the game. Every time we get three of them, we'll get a health upgrade. And then there are also another set of collectibles that give another upgrade. You went to the old temple, but mom told me never to go in there. We do what we please, boy. No excuses. But whereas... God of War 1 through 3 and the PSP games and Ascension... weren't really critical of Kratos as a person, and they didn't present much of a character arc... This one does. Can I have my bow back now? Can you hit it from here? We should get closer. I went hunting with Mother a bunch of times. He never wanted to take me. Why now? It was her wish. And it was time. Uh, 
Uh, this set of Draugr, they want you to explore this idea of throwing the axe in combat. Uh, and also that you get more damage off of uh, precision shots, which are just headshots or hits at a weak point. Uh, and the Leviathan Axe of Kratos uh, can actually freeze enemies in place, especially with a nice precision throw. And I think one of my favorite things to do with the axe is embed it with a precision shot like that and then recall it out of uh, being embedded in their skulls. That's one of the most satisfying feelings. Just wore it around. Oh god, it's such a, an immaculate feeling. Also, there's a light and a heavy throw. And also, if you don't have the axe because you haven't recalled it, you have a different moveset with your fists and your shield. It's this is our first puzzle solving mechanic with the axe. Uh, we freeze the mechanism after we raise the gate. And we will take a little detour to open this chest up. For a bunch of axe silver. That's eh, not bad. Now when we pass through the gate, we will recall the axe back to us and it will open this side. So we're going to get this first, and we'll head up the chain, because that actually leads to an otherwise inaccessible area, uh, which overlooks the arena we were just fighting in. Oh man, I love Atreus' animations, all of them. They're so good. The way he clings to Kratos' back like a spider monkey when he climbs stuff. Right. So that blows up the debris, allowing us to open the gate up get what's behind there. Which is really, I think, just more hack silver. We're not getting all that much valuable uh, stuff this early on in the game. It's okay, though. It's in our way anyway. The thing I'm really interested in is uh, just up these stairs. First, we have to break this down with the axe. Here. Boy. Oh, look! It's Skull and Hati, the giant wolves who chase the sun and moon. Where did they come from? How did they get up there? What's happening there at the end? They eat the sun and moon? And then everybody fights? There are tons of those uh, little storyboards. And they often just give you uh, some insights into Norse mythology. Something that I actually know very little about. So if you want to, as the series goes on, and it's going to be a fairly long one, uh, share your knowledge of Norse mythos, hey, feel free to in the comments. what you started. Uh, 
I can't. I think that's a good place to stop for today. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.